Hey, welcome to Linway's Staycation Bible School. This year we're doing it by video, and we're hoping that you enjoy it, as well as learn something from it. I'm Mr. Scott. You may have seen me around before at some of these events. But this week, we're going to be talking about Bible stories, and we're calling it the Wild Blue Bible Adventure. So, every day we're going to come in, there's going to be a different story. We're going to try to bring it to life that you're going to meet these people that were real people and how it affected their lives and how that could be affected in our lives. And I hope that you're ready. So let's go. This is my lovely assistant. Hi, I'm Miss Leslie, and I hope you're ready. And I'd like to get a great big blue sky high clap out of you guys. So everybody, let's get up, stand up, and on three... We'll clap our hands above our head and say, I'm glad to be here. Ready? One, two, three. I'm glad, I'm glad to, be to be here. here. All right. Okay. So I'm glad you're here too. Okay. Take it away, Mr. Scott. Just remember, we're just winging it. Okay. Thanks, Miss Leslie. Okay. So today... We are going to take our Bible story from the book of Matthew. It's chapters 8, 5 through 13. And it's about a Roman officer. And he was a Roman officer would have been a very unlikely person to be in a Bible story with, with Jesus' time. However, <clears throat> God chooses people to be in places and we don't know why and how it's going to work out but this is how it worked out with the Roman officer so let me tell you what this Roman officer was okay so he was a centurion and he was in charge of soldiers and being a centurion that meant he had a hundred soldiers that had to listen to him that he was in charge of and he was there because everywhere that Jesus went, there were crowds. And with crowds, sometimes things get a little busy. And, you know, like when, it, when everybody's together, like whether you've been there, um, they were there just to keep things in control. And everywhere Jesus went, there were crowds. Not so much that there was trouble. But... We've been places, right, that have crowds. Oh, yeah. Maybe it's a ball game or a parade. Right. And, you know, like maybe everybody's going in at the same time and there's lots of people moving and that, that makes other people move with them. Or everybody's leaving at the same time. Or maybe they need a bathroom at the same time. If it's between innings or, you know, I don't know if it's a concert or between songs maybe. So, anyway, that's what the Roman officer and his soldiers were there, was to help control the crowds. Kind of like the police that we have today. Okay, so today, we're going to meet one of those Roman officers, and he had never actually met Jesus yet, but their paths were getting ready to cross. So, before we find out what happens... Let's find out what the Roman officer's job would have been like. So I'm going to pretend that I'm the Roman officer, okay? And I'm going to have Otis here, if he would join us, as along with you guys, could be our, my soldiers, okay? So right now, you're in the Roman army. And in the o army, it's just like they, they get told what to do and they practice over and over. Kind of like a dog, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, everybody's always telling the dog what to do, huh? Sit, stay, fetch, whatever. Well, the army, that's how we're going to do the army, too. So, I got my whistle. All right. Attention. Everybody stand with their hands at your side, straight up and down. Good. About face. Turn right around. Okay. About face. Okay. Everybody's looking forward again. Good. 
You guys are doing good. Let's march in place now. Okay? Everybody's marching in place. Good deal. At rest. Good. We should do that again. Let's do it again. Okay. Attention. About face. About face. All right. March in place. Good, good, good. All right. Thanks, Otis. At rest. Halt. Good, good, good. So, when they would have been marching, because soldiers do a lot of marching, right? They would have done... Um, they would have done like songs, and and it, and a lot of times the songs would rhyme. So let's do one of these songs, okay? It says we'll do it while we're marching in place. I don't know, but I've been told. I don't know, but I've been told. BBS is good as gold. BBS is good as gold. Sound off. Sound off. One two. One two. Three four. Three four. Good. Trust God. All right. Thanks, Miss Leslie and Otis. All right. So I kind of goofed that up a little bit. Let's do that again. We should do it again anyhow, because they would have done it in the army. I don't know, but I've been told. I don't know, but I've been told. BBS is good as gold. BBS is good as gold. Good. Sound off. Sound off. One, two. One, two. Three, four. Three, four. Trust Good, good, good. So, that was pretty, I like that part. So, that was what the Roman army was doing and in there, being told what to do. The Roman soldiers were used to being in control, especially the centurion, the officer. He was really in control because he had his guys that he was in control of. So, we're going to read our Bible story right now. And this is, there should be a handout with your packet, with the Bible, Bible um, passage in there. And this is Matthew 8, we're going to read 5 to 13. We'll look like this. Oh, okay, great. I have a coffee right here. So, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed and in terrible suffering. Jesus said to him, I will go and heal him. And the centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority, and with soldiers under me, I tell this one, go, and he goes, and that one, come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was astonished, and he said to those following him, I tell you the truth. I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west, and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When Jesus said to the centurion, go, it will be done just as you believed it would. And his servant was healed that very hour. Okay, that's right from the Bible. Okay, so... Miss Leslie, would you have us um, take the next part? Sure. Okay. Well, in this story, somebody who was used to be in control all the time, our Roman officer, had no control of the situation. So, we had a big problem. It was kind of like this. Okay, guys. I want you to Pull out a piece of paper and a pencil or crayon or any kind of marker. We'll uh, give you a minute. If you need it, you could pause the video. But um, what I want you to do is think of someone you really care about. Maybe it's your brother or sister, 
mom or dad, a friend, even a pet. So take your paper and your pencil, just draw a quick picture of this person that you care about. And it doesn't have to be fancy, just, you know, stick figure, arms and legs, you know, maybe something like this, even. Just make sure, you know, you give it a name. Put their person's name on there. Okay. I'll give you a couple seconds here. Now, <clears throat> now imagine that that person that you care about is way over there. Maybe you're in North Versailles or East of Keysport, but they're all the way over somewhere across the state, maybe Philadelphia, if you know where that is. Anyhow, so they're far Pretty away. Far. Yeah, and maybe they're sick, really sick, could even be in the hospital, or they're in trouble and need help. But you're far, far away from them. So how would you feel in that situation? Well, I know if that was me, I would feel pretty scared and helpless. I'd be worried and upset. Well, this is kind of how our, our a centurion was, our Roman officer, because his servant was sick. And he was far away from him and couldn't help. So, <clears throat> well, turn it back over to Mr. Scott here. Okay, thank you. And if you're not done with your picture, that's fine. You can keep drawing um, while I'm talking, or you can go back to it, whichever. So, our Roman officer, as we read in, in this story in the Bible, he had this young servant, and he really cared about him. And he probably cared about all of his soldiers, because he needed them, all of them. And he was sick, and it says that he was paralyzed, and... Um, he wanted Jesus to, to heal him. And it was pretty amazing on a bunch of things. One, a Roman officer, let alone a Roman soldier, wouldn't have been listening to Jesus or following Jesus because he wanted to. That was his job. He wasn't believing what Jesus was saying. Jesus was, at that time, he was a Jewish teacher. And the Romans didn't follow the Jewish lessons of the, of the way they were teaching. But this Roman soldier, this Roman officer in the century, he knew that Jesus had power and he could heal him wherever he was. Whatever he needed, Jesus had the power to do that. And that's exactly what our officer did. He, Hello again. Hi. So the Roman officer, he, he came to Jesus and he was begging him, please. Wait a minute. He couldn't talk to Jesus. I know. Isn't that so unusual? He was Jewish. He. I know. But Jesus was. Talk to somebody, a Jewish person. You're right, Otis and Miss Leslie. That's right. But actually, the Roman officer, he knew that he could go to Jesus. Like any of us can. Anybody then, and anybody now, and anybody in the future can go to Jesus. Jesus is for everybody. So, and, and he came to him. So we can't go to Jesus personally like the Roman officer did, but we can pray to Jesus. And that's what he did. He pleaded with him. And he knew that Jesus could, could do that. And that was wonderful. That was really good how that worked. All right. So that was pretty, that was a really good lesson about the Roman officer. Um, so, maybe, like, if that were me, you know, would you, would I have said um, thank you to Jesus? Oh, I definitely would have said thank you. But the Roman officer, he was, he, he says, but you could do it. You could just 
Julie, right from here. You don't have to go to my little house. You know, he was, because he knew it was Jesus was God, so he didn't like he didn't need him to see his little house. And so, um, just like the soldiers do what they're told, um, the sick did what he. I mean, Jesus did what he told him, and then he got up. And he was he was healed, and he can help anyone anywhere. Just like he did there. Um, and Jesus was amazed by this Roman officer's faith. He had a lot of faith that Jesus could do this. And he trusted God. So, um, he healed him. And that way Jesus didn't have to stop what he was doing where he was. He didn't have to go anywhere. And he kept teaching. So it's the faith of that centurion that we all get to carry with us that Jesus will always be with us. What do you think of that, Ms. Leslie? Well, I think our Roman officer learned no matter who you are, you can trust God. Mm -hmm. We can trust God too. Don't let ever, anyone ever tell you you're too young or too old or too anything. We, we can all trust God in a big way when we need him. Think of the person you drew on that picture. Think of it a time, again, you know, where that person was involved in something and, and, and you couldn't help at that moment. So what would you do? Well, you can trust God to fix the situation. You would say a prayer and plead with God to take care of it. Is there somebody else maybe we could think of and pray for at this time? Well, I mean, it could be our parents, our grandparents, maybe an, an elderly neighbor. Sure, or, you know, in this day and time, we could think of our health care workers and even our grocery store checkout right. people. You know, everybody's, you know. Everybody in, has to do something. In danger now. Yeah. And all the time, you know? So, let's just... Okay. So let's say a prayer, and let's bow our heads. Dear God, we thank you that no matter who we are, we can trust you with everything and anything. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. See you tomorrow. Hey, guys. Next... Yeah, we'll see you. And we'll have a new lesson. Okay. Okay, and don't forget, we're just winging it. <laughs>